Welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this tutorial I will go over how to create a melee weapon, how to set up its animations and other data related to it, as well as how to actually make it deal damage to enemies. The system that we will make today is going to be super simple and versatile, so feel free to adapt it in whatever way you wish. But before we begin, Unity is currently having the New Year's sale that lasts from the 12th of December till the 8th of January. There are thousands of assets with up to 50% off, so you can genuinely get a lot of good quality assets for such a good price. I myself will be using some assets in this video. Apart from the sale, you can use code ZYGERNY22, all caps, for an extra 10% off of your purchase. Once again, ZYGERNY22. And if your total is more than $150, you can use the code HELLO2022, all caps once again, for an extra 5% off. These codes don't stack though, so I recommend using my code ZYGERNY22. So be sure to check some of the assets out and grab them if you like. I will also leave links in the description to the assets that I am using in today's tutorial. Thanks Unity for sponsoring this video, now let's continue. Okay, so inside of Unity this is my setup. I have my first person controller and the camera. If I were to press play, I can basically just move my player around. If you're following this tutorial, you can also have a first person controller. Obviously your scene might look a little bit different. Okay, so before doing any code, we're actually just going to set up our scene and our weapon on our player. So first of all, let's locate your camera, your main one, and right click it and create an empty object and call it weapon holder. Inside of here, we will place our weapons. Now in this case, I'm only going to have one weapon, but feel free to add however many you want for your game. Okay, so I'm going to be using this sword pack, and once again, I'll link to this in the description below, and I'm going to grab my sword and just drop it into the scene. Now make sure it's actually not inside of the weapon holder just yet. I'm going to right click and unpack it and just change its name, and then drag it into weapon holder. The reason we drag it onto the scene first before going into the weapon holder is because we want it to keep its original size. So then in the transform I'm going to set some values. First of all I'm just going to make sure that the sword is centered right in the middle of the camera. I'm then going to make it move slightly forward so I'm just going to place this at 1. And I'm just going to play around with the size. I went ahead and decided to go for 1.3, 1.3 and 1.2 so that it's slightly larger than what it was before. As you can see this is what it looks like on the actual game view. Now don't worry, don't position your sword just yet as we will be doing this via animations. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it animations. I'm then going to go into window and then animation and select animation. I'm going to dock this at the bottom here. And once again, go into Window, and then Animation, and Animator, and dock it at the top. I'm then going to click my sword, and then press Create Animation. I will locate the folder that we just created, open it up, and create an animation. In this case, I am going to make an idle animation for my sword. Now, to make things easier, I'm just going to have my sword not be visible when it's idle, and only show up when I attack. However, feel free to do whatever you want for this animation. So I'm going to press record and I'm going to set it up so it's not visible by the camera. I'm going to set the position to 1.2, then about minus 0.3, set the Z to minus 0.5 so it's hidden, and I'm going to angle it so that it fits the rotation that I'm going to have the attack in. So in my case I'm just going to set this to 76, and then 90, and minus 8. Now I'm aware this doesn't make much sense, but I'm going to have my sword swing across my character like so. Whatever you do for these animations is kind of up to you, so feel free to play around with them. And then I'm going to stop recording, and I'm going to click this and select click create new clip. I'm also going to create another animation called sword attack, and I'm going to press record. So the first frame is I'm going to have it be in the same exact position that the previous one was, so 1.2 minus 0.3 minus 0.2, then 76, 90, and minus 8. Now for the attack animation, I want my sword to swing around, as I said previously. So I'm going to go to about here, press record, and I'm going to make sure that the sword is now in the center of the screen, right in front of the player. So I've already played around with these settings, but feel free to do uh, whatever you want with these, and play around with them honestly, because it takes some time to get it perfect. But these are the values that I decided to set, and now as you can see, it's in the center of the screen. Now something important is I'm going to make sure that the Y value pretty much stays exactly the same across the entirety of the animation, so that it looks nice and sleek. And then I'm going to go to about 10 seconds in, and I'm going to make it go to the other side. 
So for this, I'm once again going to keep the y value as it is. I'm going to set this to minus 1. For the z, I'm going to do 0.17. And I'm just going to rotate it to 77, 270, and then 356. Okay, so as you can see, if I am um, to play the animation, you can see that the sword just swipes from one end to the other. Now this is the animation that I decided to go for, but pretty much create whatever you want. I'm not an expert on animations, and this probably won't look as good as it could be. Next up, we're going to go to the animator at the top, and you should see your two animations that you created. If you don't see them here, just go into your project, animations, select it, and just drag it in like so. In the parameters, we're going to create a new trigger, and we're going to call it attack. Essentially, whenever we trigger this in our script, we want our sword to attack. So we'll start it on idle, and I'm going to make a transition to the sword attack. On this transition, I'm going to set the exit time to zero and turn off exit time. However, I'm going to make sure that the condition is the attack trigger. And then we're going to make a transition on the way back. And on this one, I'm once again just going to make sure that exit time is zero. But this time, I am going to keep has exit time on it. And this is our entire animation. Now feel free to play around with this, you might want to have several different attacks and you want to set that up in whatever way you want to do that. So if we go ahead and press play, we can actually test this out before actually making the script. So I'm just going to dock my animator script to the side here, and if I just exit it and press attack, you can see we have our animation playing, but it does look slightly weird, so let's fix it up. First of all, go to your animations and make sure loop time is completely off so that it doesn't loop over and over again, apart from the idle. The idle can actually uh, stay looped. If we press play now and drag our animator just to the side and press attack, we can see that the animation plays. However, it's extremely fast and we can barely see it. So what we can do is click on the sword attack in this animator and actually just change its speed here. So I'm just going to set it to like 0.35, but generally just feel free to play around with it. And now if we trigger it, we can see that our attack just looks so much better. Okay, now that we have done that, we've basically got the entire setup, we just need to do the coding part. So on your weapon holder, I'm just going to select add component, and I'm going to type in weapon controller. And select new script, create an add. Okay, so inside of the script, we can actually get rid of the update and starting position for now, we'll add them in later. And let's set up some variables. First of all, we want to make a reference to our actual game object, aka our sword. Now, if you have other objects, you can add them here as well, like for instance a pistol or an axe. That is sort of completely up to you. I'm then going to make a boolean, and I'm going to make it public for now, but feel free to make it private. And I'm going to call it can attack. And I'm going to set it to true by default. We're basically going to use this variable to make sure that we can only actually attack when this variable is true. I'm also going to make a float and I'm going to make it public and I'm going to call it attack cooldown. And for now I'm just going to set it to one second, however we can edit this later. Okay so let's create the update function, I know we just removed it but we're just going to create it again and I'm just going to make it um, normal instead of private. And inside of here we are going to check for input. Now in my case I am going to check for left click, but feel free to use any keys you want. And the way we do this is we type input dot get mouse button down. And then inside of this we want to type what kind of mouse button click we want to select. And zero stands for left click and one stands for right click. So I'm going to select zero because that's what I want. Then we're going to check if we can actually attack, so if this variable is true, we are going to call a function. Now this function doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. I'm going to create a public void sword attack, and this is the function that we're going to call, so let's type in sword attack. Now inside of here is sort of up to you on what you do. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to make it super simple, but you can make it uh, whatever you want. First of all, we're going to set can attack to false because we are currently attacking. And we're going to do a couple things. First of all, let's get the animator and call the trigger. So I'm going to make a new reference to the animator and I'm going to call it anim. I'm then going to grab our sword and get component animator. Now we're going to set the trigger of that animator. So let's do anim.set trigger. And then we want the trigger name. Now I called mine attack, but whatever you called it, you want to type that here. Okay, so right now this works pretty well, however for now we can only attack once because we have not reset this can attack variable. 
Now the way you reset it is once again up to you. I'm going to do this via a coroutine, which we can do as such. We can make a new I enumerator called reset attack cooldown. Instead of which, I'm going to create a yield return new wait for seconds. And instead of the seconds, we are going to copy this attack cooldown that we set up earlier and just paste that into there. Finally, we want to set can attack to true. Okay, so inside of Unity, let's go to our weapon holder and actually assign our sword first of all. And if we press play, I can see on the side we have the boolean that we can attack and I can click attack and our sword sways our animation. However, as you can see, it doesn't get set back. And the reason for this is because we have yet to call our coroutine. So we can do this in the sword attack. And to do this, we can call start coroutine, reset attack cooldown. And you've got to do brackets aside because it acts as a function. Now, if we try this, you can see the boolean on the side will turn off and then turn back on after a second. Okay, this is great. Let's also go ahead and play a sound effect when we attack to make it seem more realistic. Okay, so in my project, I have this sword slash sound effect, and this is basically what we're going to play. So on my weapon holder, I am going to add an audio source. Now I'm adding my audio source on the weapon holder, but you can add this um, onto any objects you want. Then I'm going to access my weapon controller script, and we're going to do something super simple. At the top, we are going to make a new audio clip, and we're going to call this sword attack sound. Then inside of the attack, I am going to uh, create a new reference to the audio source. So let's make an audio source, and I'm just going to call it AC, equal get component audio source. Finally, I'm going to do ac.play one shot, and inside of this, I'm going to do the sword attack sound, like so. And let's just move that up there. And let's make sure we do this before our coroutine starts. Back in Unity, all we have to do is just assign our clip onto the weapon controller. And now when we press play, we should be able to hear a sound effect when we left click. There we go. We have a melee weapon working now. The last thing I'm going to show you how to do is actually how to make this deal damage to enemies. So this is super simple. We are going to go onto our sword and add a new component called a collider. Now I'm going to add a box collider, but feel free to add any sort of collider you wish. Now, by default, this is just going to um, enclose the entire sword. However, we want this to be slightly longer. So what I'm going to do is set this to be a trigger and select this to edit it. First of all, I'm going to make it a little bit wider this way. Um, now, another thing is our sword is going to be facing um, this way from the player. And if any enemy is smaller than the player, this won't be able to hit them because the collider isn't big enough. So what we can do is just make it longer on this end. I'm also going to give myself a little bit more freeway on the hitbox, but once again, feel free to play around with this however you want. Next up, we need our enemy, and I'm going to be using a stylized fantasy bundle of creatures that I downloaded from the Unity Asset Store. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below because it's absolutely awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab one of these uh, dinosaurs and just drag him in. First of all, let's give him a component called um, Box Collider once again, or Circle, depending on what the size of your creature is. And make sure that this Box Collider, aka the hitbox, just covers the entire dinosaur or whatever your enemy is. This is pretty good, you can make it more um, accurate, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to leave it like so. I'm also going to set it to be a trigger. Now your enemy is going to need a rigid body for this to work. Now don't worry, you don't have to actually... Um, what's it called, give it gravity or play around with this. I'm going to set the gravity to off so that it doesn't actually just mess up things for the time being. But once again, make this however you want it to work. Now there's two more things we're going to need to do. First of all, we're going to give our enemy a tag. So press add tag and I'm going to call this enemy. This is because we only want our sword to detect on enemies and we're going to give it the enemy tag. Now my dinosaur already has a animator, but if yours doesn't, don't worry, you can create it just like we did for the sword. And right now it just enters the idle state. But what we want to do is detect it getting hit, so I'm going to make a new trigger called hit. I'm then going to grab the hit animation and make a transition from the idle to the hit and from the hit back to the idle. On the first uh, transition, we're going to give it the trigger hit and set the exit time to zero and turn it off. And on the way back, we're also going to set the exit time to zero, but keep it on this time, just like we did for the sword. 
Okay, so next up we're gonna select our sword and you're gonna have to do this on the sword because it has the box collider. And basically we're gonna give it a script called collision detection. And select new script, create an ad. Okay, so the setup of the script is going to be super, super simple. We can remove these two functions at the top and let's make some variables. First of all, we want to make a reference to our weapon controller and I will make sense of this in just a second. Um, I'm also going to make a reference to a particle that I'm going to spawn when we hit the enemy. So I'm just going to call this hit particle. We're going to make a void on trigger enter. Now, because our game is not 2D, I'm just going to leave it as the normal one. And inside of this, we want to do two checks. First of all, we want to check if our other, aka our collider, and its tag is equal to enemy. We said this earlier because we are going to be swinging our sword around and if it attacks something else, we don't want it to do anything unless it's an enemy. So first of all, we're going to set the animation of the enemy. So let's do other get component animator and set trigger hit. Now I set mine as hit and every enemy that I create from now on will have a hit trigger. So make sure that your naming conventions are exactly the same for every enemy, otherwise it's not going to work for everything you create. Let's also do a quick little debug.log to check if this works and we're just going to output other.name. So just so we can see what we're hitting. Finally, I'm going to instantiate my particle. Now the way you do this is kind of up to you, but I'm just gonna make sure that this happens on the enemy. So I'm gonna do hit particle, then create a new vector three, instead of which I'm going to grab other.transform.position.x. Then on the Y, I am going to set it to um, the current swords transform.position.y. And finally, the Z I'm going to set to other.transform.position.z. Then outside of this, we also need to set the rotation. And that's super simple. We can just do other.transform.rotation, like so. I know this seems super long, so I'm just going to um, get this on a new line for you guys so you can kind of see it nicer. Um, but this is what it is. This is the entire instantiation of the particle. Now, before we actually test this out, we want to do one more thing. If right now I were to go into the game, I could just walk into the enemy and this would trigger. This is because we aren't actually checking if we are attacking. Now we can do this super simply. Back in our weapon controller script, we can create a new boolean and I'm going to make it public because we are going to be accessing it um, in that other script called is attacking. And by default, I'm going to set it to false. Then whenever we attack, we are going to set is attacking to true because we are currently attacking. However, we also want to reset this boolean and I would recommend resetting it when your animation finishes. Um, now the easiest way I'm just gonna do this is via a coroutine. You can make a much more in-depth and better method for doing so. But since this is such a simple tutorial, I'm just going to make a coroutine. We did this before, so let's make an I enumerator and we're gonna call this reset attack. Ball. Inside of which I am once again just going to copy this line from above but instead of the attack cooldown I'm going to set it to one second because that's how long my animation roughly is. Then I'm going to copy this is attacking and instead of setting it to true we're going to set it to false. Final thing is we want to call this coroutine once again and we can just call it instead of the reset attack cooldown. So start coroutine and reset attack ball. Once again, make sure to add the brackets because it counts as a function. Now, instead of the collision detection, we want to check if we are attacking. Now, we already made a reference to the weapon controller, so I'm going to call wc dot is attacking. And if that is true, which by itself like this, it means it's true, we can do all of this. Awesome, let's go back into Unity and test it out. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to go onto my sword and assign these variables. So the weapon holder will be our weapon controller script. And then the hit particle is just a particle that you want to spawn. If we press play now and just go up to this dude and, and press attack, you can see that they are reacting and some particles are being spawned. Awesome. So guys, that is it for this tutorial. Once again, this is super basic and you can take this further and further if you wish. In the clip before, I was showing this on multiple enemies. You can also do that. Just make sure that the enemy has the enemy tag and also has the animator trigger name of hit. And once again, has that animation set up. But that is basically it. At this point, you can add other attacks as well as other animations or maybe even other weapons. 
But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to leave links to the assets that I use in this video in the description below because they are just super awesome. Plus, they're on sale and thousands of other assets are as well. Thank you Unity for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys later. Bye!